So I think that as progressives and democratic socialists, we all know what we're looking for in candidates. We want those, you know, bold progressive policy proposals, and we want them to be so bold and open about what they want to do to change the country and, you know, really just remake the status quo that people who are powerful, special interests, American oligarchs openly are contemptful of that candidate because that's what really proves to us that the candidate is the real deal and they're fighting for us, right? Because back in 2008, I really felt like Obama was that change candidate like he said he was. But, you know, a lot of us, I think, myself especially included, were naive. We didn't look at the financial contributions that he was taking from Wall Street. And I think that we all learned our lesson and now we realize that, you know, you can judge how progressive a candidate is by looking at how much they are hated by American oligarchs. Now, there is a report from Giacomo Tognini of Forbes who talks about how much billionaires love the 2020 Democratic Party primary candidates. And he's judging this based on who received the most support and donations from billionaires. Now, in the top five, we have Pete Buttigieg, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Michael Bennett, and Joe Biden. Now, Pete Buttigieg has a total of 23 billionaire donors. This includes a big oil executive's wife, Len Blavatnik. Uh, he also had an executive from Blackstone Group, as well as Netflix CEO Reed Hastings host fundraisers for him. Cory Booker has 18 billionaires, which includes former CEO of Estee Lauder, an heiress from Cox Enterprises, Bill Gates, and Google's former CEO, Eric Schmidt. Uh, we have Kamala Harris with 17 billionaire donors. That includes another heir to Cox Enterprise and uh, George Lucas. And we have Michael Bennett, who is what, polling at 0% with 15 billionaire donors. And that includes hedge fund billionaire Jim Simmons, and then we have Joe Biden with 13 billionaire donors. That includes Warren Buffett and real estate moguls like Neil Bloom and Herb Simon. So that's the top five. And that's just crazy. Think about that. Pete Buttigieg attracted 23 billionaire donors. How are you not embarrassed? Because you're clearly not looking out for the people if that many oligarchs are donating to you. Because if they're spending money on you, they obviously see that there is a value in getting you elected to them, right? Because we're all self-interested. We vote based on what affects us personally. So, of course, they're not going to donate to someone who they don't believe will actually look out for them. And Pete Buttigieg, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, all would undoubtedly look out for American oligarchs. Now, let's go to the rest of the list here. John Hickenlooper came in sixth place with 11 billionaire donors, Beto O'Rourke with nine, Amy Klobuchar with eight, Jay Inslee with five, Kirsten Gillibrand with four, John Delaney with three, and even Elizabeth Warren has two billionaire donors. Her and Steve Bullock are actually tied in 12th place with two billionaires each. And Elizabeth Warren, uh, one of her billionaire donors anyway, is Susan Pritzker. Now in 13th place, we have Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang, and Marianne Williamson. Now, Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang both received a donation from Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey, and Marianne Williamson got money from Rebecca Poland. And let's get to the people who have zero billionaire donors. There's only four candidates. Julian Castro, Bill de Blasio, Tim Ryan, and Bernie Sanders. All with zero billionaire donors. Now, the most remarkable thing ever to me is that Bernie Sanders is a top-tier candidate. He has consistently polled in second place. So the fact that he has zero billionaire donors, do you want to know what that communicates to me? He's the real deal. I want to support the candidate who is hated by billionaires. That's what I want. I don't want someone who's going to assure them that the status quo won't change. I don't want someone who's going to tell us one thing and then do something else behind closed doors. I want someone who openly says, you know what, these billionaires, these American oligarchs can hate me and I welcome their hate. That's what FTR said and Bernie Sanders echoed that same sentiment in 2016 and he's basically saying the same thing again 
in 2020 because he's being antagonistic on purpose towards the billionaire class. He's saying, this is paid for by you, not the billionaires. And it's because we don't need to be winning over billionaires. If you are a billionaire, then by definition, you are an immoral person. I truly believe that. And maybe people think that I'm too extreme. Fine. But that's my opinion. If you have a billion dollars, you are a greedy, immoral person and you are hoarding your wealth. Um, so what do you do? You know, I mean, of course, we want to raise taxes and people like Bill Gates can say, look, I want the government to raise my taxes. But I mean, you're still hanging on to that wealth. Donate it. Give that money to progressive causes. I mean, let's say, hypothetically speaking, I was a billionaire and the government wanted to give me a bunch of tax breaks. Um, what would I do with that money? Basically, um, I'd probably give away almost all of it, but I would certainly keep a portion to do pro Medicare for all advertisements. I'd flood the airwaves with that, you know, to counter some of the propaganda we see from the pharmaceutical industry. But how many billionaires are actually doing this? When there are so many people who are struggling to put food on the table, living paycheck to paycheck, I just don't know how people can live with themselves if they have that much money, if you're hoarding that much wealth. You know, if you're making 10 million a year and you're still worried about your own taxes, I mean, Jesus, it, it, like money is a drug. Like you get it and you just want more of it. It's addictive, right? This is what capitalism incentivizes. It corrupts institutions and it corrupts people. You know, this is why I've become extremely anti-capitalist because this is what capitalism does. It pits us against one another. It makes it so that way all we care about is profits over people. And we're willing to betray our own family members if, you know, money is brought into the equation. And not everyone is like this. Of course, I'm generalizing, but we shouldn't have that incentive is what I want to communicate. You know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have to worry so much about money that you stop talking to your brother if he forgets to pay you back the $20 that he borrowed from you. You know, it's just, this isn't the way that life should be. It doesn't have to be this way. But um, I've kind of gotten a little bit off topic. But long story short, I'm glad that I support the candidate who has zero donations from billionaires. Pete Buttigieg, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Joe Biden. These are absolutely corrupt frauds. And what these donations tell you is that if they get elected, do you think they're going to be beholden to you? or beholden to all of these billionaires and probably dozens and dozens, uh, if not hundreds of millionaires donating to them. I mean, obviously, they will be beholden to the American oligarchs who helped them get elected. That's the way that politics works. That's the way that uh, our democracy functions since capitalism has corrupted it entirely. You could support the Humanist Report at Patreon dot com slash humanist report but trust me i'd have way more supporters on patreon if that was my podcast sad <laughs>